Hello everyone, this is Angel Bernice at servicemanagers.org expert talk. Today we're going to meet with Suresh GP about IT governance. Let me take this time to introduce him to you. He's a business consultant at HP with deep enterprise uh, expertise in delivering IT service management and IT governance in Asia Pacific region, including Hong Kong, China, and Singapore. Hi, Suresh, how are you doing? Hey, Angel, thanks for inviting. I'm doing well. How about you? Very well, very well. Uh, it's a real pleasure having you with us on Expert Talk today. Sure. Okay, uh, let's start. Um, my first question for you, Suresh, is what is IT governance and why is it needed? Right. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions today about what is IT governance. So let us talk about from a definition of what COVID says, right? So if you look at COVID-5, it actually clearly indicates um, the the concept that governance is governance, governance ensures that that you meet the stakeholder needs. Your stakeholders could be your customers, your business users, all your employees as well. In in meeting the uh, stakeholder needs, one of the things that is imperative is to make sure that you have a clear direction. So the clear direction comes from the governance, setting priorities for the direction of that, and then making sure that you measure your performance, compliance, and regulations to meet your strategy strategic business objectives. So in end to end, governance look at the overarching framework to meet your strategic business objectives, meet stakeholder needs, and ensure that you get performance, compliance, and results. Right? Now, why is it needed? Now, this question, if you look at what we are today, we are into an information explosion days, right? So right from uh, consumerization of IT, moving into cloud, big data, there are so much of things that are happening. Now, very importantly, the, the organization needs to cope up with the market demand. So as we're trying to cope up with the market demand in terms of technology, in terms of competitive advantage, reducing the cost, one of the foremost imperative is how do you govern the IT, right? When I say about governance of IT, I'm talking about what I ensure that I meet my strategic objectives, get better return on investment, make sure that I give a splendid performance and so that my stakeholders and customers are much happy, and I'm able to meet the regulatory and legal compliance, right? As we get into a lot of these things, a lot of norms in terms of security, information security threat, risk management, and so on other stuff. So governance is more of making sure that your organization is having the ability to scale up to meet the overall needs of the business. Uh -huh. Very, very interesting. Um, our next question has been received from Twitter by uh, Mark Smiley, and he says, information and technology are intertwined but separate entities that should be governed, managed in their own right, discussed. Okay, uh, do you uh, agree with Mark? Yeah, I think it's a very uh, uh, interesting point that Mark had raised across. One is the information piece, the other one is technology. Now, we have been using these terminologies uh, quite often, thinking that they all belong to information assets, right? So, uh, when I talk about technology, let's take technology about cloud, we talk about big data, right? We talk about mobility. So these are all disruptive technologies. The other one is in terms of information that could also look about big data, which is different unstructured way in which information is today, right? It's also to be the ability to have um, the, the aspects of information in various formats, right? We talk about uh, information available through email, through documents, and, and various other sources. Now, governance per se, if you look at it as a broad term, they combine both information and technology together. However, if you look at, if you ask the same question to a security professional, his question is, hey, I'm more concerned about information security. I'm looking at the ways that my data will get leak, leaked. 
my data will get uh, protected. So I'm looking at more, if you look at what kind of a role that you play in terms of understanding information or technology. If I am an information security professional, I look at more from an information as a data, right? A data needs to be protected. It needs to be governed. It has to have proper access privilege. So you look at that aspects. When you talk about technology, that again comes, let's say, I have outsourced my services to a cloud provider. One of the things that I want to make sure is my data is secure. In that case, you have a technology layer, and within the technology layer, you have an information layer underneath. So if you look at this, they are different layers, but put together, they all encompass the overall governance. So it is uh, depending clearly on what perspective you look into it. It could be a, as an information security professional, I'm not looking at beyond information. But if you are looking at a governance professional, you would need to look into at a technology layer, at information layer, and various other layers that is involved. That's how I will make a distinction between information and technology put into the frame of governance. Okay, very, very interesting, the, the layers approach. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, uh, our next question is, uh, imagine we don't know uh, our business goals. How we can govern IT? Now, this is a, um, a, a good question, Angel. One of the things that I always ask is, who is the um, customer for IT? Now, this has got a profound meaning in the way that we operate governance. For me, the, the most important customer for IT is business. IT cannot exist without business. So the most important aspect that IT need to look at is what is the business goal or business objective that the organization is embarking? Because IT is no longer a cost uh, thing. It is an enabler. It is a kind of a value differentiator for all the organizations. So in your case, when you tell that there are, there are no business goals, I'm a little shocked because if you do not know about your business goals, your governance will not, IT will not be able to fulfill the expectations of business. So one of the foremost things that we need to do as part of um, IT is to sit with the business and understand what is their strategic direction? Because if you don't have a business goals, there is no way governance can be implemented. So if I just take a step back, what does COVID say? So it starts with your strategic business objectives, which is again, build down into business goals. From business goals, you build down to IT goals. And then from IT goals, you go to process level and then activities, KPIs, right? So in order to achieve all that stuff, the first and foremost thing that I recommend is the balance scorecard. Now this balance scorecard, if you look at it, has got some four quadrants like customer, financial, performance, and operational efficiency. Now all these four quadrants are primarily determined by business. IT has to align with the business objective. So if I don't have a business goal, then I have a, a big problem. Okay, I agree, I agree with you. Um, okay, uh, the next question is, what areas involve IT governance? So if you look at um, uh, IT governance, to give a, uh, an important perspective of areas that address uh, IT governance, first and foremost is strategic business alignment. When I mean strategic business alignment, it is making sure that IT is aligned with business to achieve your strategic objectives. So making sure that business IT alignment and integration happens, that is the first most area where we talk about IT governance. The second one important area is value delivery. Now more often, as I told you, there's a lot of investment made on IT, but business has no clue about what IT is doing. So value delivery is another area where IT governance can be uh, realized. What I mean to say is, Am I investing the right amount of money? I'm getting the return on investment. Am I providing value to customers and business? The third aspect is performance measurement. Now, when I say about performance measurement, now we are having, we are very good in SLAs, meeting contractual agreements, service level agreements, but we do not have an insight into whether these KPIs are related to my IT goals, to business goals, to the balance scorecard. 
So you need to look at performance measurement of making resolution of your incident tickets, my problem tickets, how does it invariably address my customer's satisfaction, right? So that is about performance measurement. The next one is resource management. I think we have been struggling heavily on resource management. We have a shared model, we have offshore on-site models, we have dedicated uh, full-time support. So how do you manage resources? Re resources could be human resources, uh, IT resources, IT assets, and other stuff. So these are also needs to be optimized. So being a resource optimization also is an area of uh, governance. So put together, all in nutshell will be a governance framework that will focus on strategic alignment, value delivery, performance measurement, and resource management. So that was, these are some of the common areas where you can implement governance and see value in business as well as for your own entire organization. Okay, very, very good points. Uh, my last question today is, uh, what are the results outcomes from IT governance? Um, in terms of outcomes, right, I think very, very important is with governance, we are focusing on business outcomes. Now, when you say about business outcomes, all that the business wants today in terms of competitive advantage, being taking control of uh, consumerization of IT, uh, disruptive technologies, ability to create better customer satisfaction, that is stakeholder management, all these elements are going to be an outcome of governance. Now, governance has been increasingly getting importance because we are now in an area of information explosion, disruptive technologies and consumerization of IT. So all that needs is better governance in terms of ensuring return on investment that you will attain, getting more traction of how we are spending money, are we getting the real value, killing off projects that are not making any sense to it, right? So as we do a proper resource optimization, value delivery, strategic alignment, all this will enable us to get better business outcomes. Whatever the organization embarks to for a journey, you will be able to achieve all that. Better control, better management, compliance to legal and regulations, and much more than customer satisfaction. So that is all about business outcomes. Now that's how I feel governance has got profound impact in terms of the outcomes that it delivers to business and customers. Okay, uh, we have finished. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your expertise in servicemanagers.org. It's been very interesting and I hope it will be, will be very useful for anyone working on IT governance. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot, Angel. It was nice uh, talking and uh, thanks to everybody who chipped in with questions on Twitter. And uh, it's been a great time and thank you again. Okay, me too. Uh, see you, Suresh, and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.